What is up YouTube? That's here today. I'm back playing more Pokemon VDC 2023 Regulation C content. Today we're looking at a team that one of my max tier Patreons used to get day two at the European International Championships. This is 100% their team. They brought me the six mons. They brought me all the moves. All they really wanted was some slight feedback on like the EVs, the IVs, maybe a couple of ways to optimize items. Like I think one of the things that I recommended was using like leftovers on Gyarados and weaving that in with Protect as well as like a couple other slight moveset choices. But again, this is 100% their team the only thing i really did was over the week or two leading up to the event i gave them some like i would say mental coaching for how to like handle playing in person how to actually deal with like games two and games three that's basically what we worked on so like i don't really want to even take credit for this because i didn't come up with how their team works but what i did do was walk them through how they should be handling going to the event and having the right mindset to actually build a team and play through a full tournament to go to day two because these tournaments are like 10 plus hour tournaments and the difference between people that make that like bomb out day one and make day two is the people that have the fortitude to play like 10 hours of pokemon with the right mindset so that's what we worked on um and this team's amazing this team's super super cool i think it's probably the best version of shenpao dragonite that i've seen so far and it's really, really good. It uses Shenpao Dragonite. It baits a lot of, you know, turn one breaking swipes, turn one icy wins. So you can swap in that King Gambit, get the Defiant Boost, and then you just clean up with things like Great Tusk in the back. This uses a support Gyarados, uses a booster flutter that gets a boost to special attack. And it's a really, really cool team. And I'd highly recommend it for anyone that actually wants to see what a higher level day two team looks like. So think about trying out this rental code. They were kind enough to provide it for us. And I will say before we get into the games today that I'm going to be doing something a little bit different on Patreon this month. We're going to be doing group coaching sessions. Normally I do my coaching sessions in one-on-one -on -one sessions, but for every member of the Patreon, even the $2, the lowest tier members, there's a link to it in the description. We're going to be doing group coaching sessions where I'm going to get together on Discord Wednesday, May 3rd, and we're probably going to do two or three of these a month, basically like every week or other week. And we're gonna be getting together with like 20, 30 people in a group chat in our Discord where I share my screen and I go over team building tips. I fix people's teams that they want me to take a look at. I show you guys a few things that basically you wouldn't know unless people told you. Pokemon's such a complicated game. Like the way the math works behind everything, the way you can like bluff weeds and create flow charts, that's a lot of stuff that you just can't really know unless someone tells you or unless you put in like a crazy amount of work. So what I'm gonna do is try my best to help as many people as possible learn competitive Pokemon in a group setting. Cause I feel like in a lot of my one-on-one -on -one coaching sessions, I tell people how to do a lot of stuff and then they learn how to build teams for themselves and then they're good. And I was like, man, this is stuff that, that so many people need to know. And I, I, I feel like I don't have enough time to help as many people. So what we're gonna do is try and help everyone at once in these group coaching sessions. So if that all sounds interesting, or you know, if you wanna ask questions, you're in like completely, like safe setting to do that with our peers and our community. I, I think it's going to be a lot of fun. I think it's going to be a lot of fun. And if it's at all interesting, let me know. Let me know in the comments. Let me know if you have any questions. I'll do my absolute best to answer. And uh, yeah, without further ado, we're going to hop into these games. And this is going to be a lot of fun. Gyarados is great. I think Gyarados is so good here. Uh, I like also that almost all of these mons have like protect. I really like to protect Dragonite on this team. So you can always go for like protect taunt, protect thunder wave, and then just like continue your sweep from there. It's a very high progressive team. And uh, we're gonna hop into these games and wish me luck. Here we go. Oh my goodness, is that Gudra? Dude, I'm excited. It's so weird seeing the Gudra sprite. It just looks so out of place on their team. Let's see, I wonder what this is gonna do. I wonder if it's like, is it gonna be Petal Blizzard? It could also be like Petal Blizzard to like proc the uh, toxic debris. Does it, does Mouse Rider even get Petal Blizzard? I don't even know. Either way, I think we're probably fine. Like, I think Flutter is probably just a great weed versus that stuff. I think, like, Flutter Tusk is probably pretty good. And I just want to check this Flutter for a sec. It's Fairy Terra. So, like, Tusk can't do anything significant next to it. So, that means maybe I'm going to bring Tusk in the back. And I'm just going to set my Tailwind. And then just have, like, Tusk clean up in the back with, like, Shen Pao. I think Shen Pao is still probably a pretty good mount. The Sacred Sword shreds through the defense boost on that Dosh Bun. And, yeah, Dosh Bun's a Fairy Mon. It's so weird that it's fairy, by the way. It doesn't seem like it would be. But, like, we still do significant damage if they get to, like, plus six defense or something. So I think Shen Pao's still a really good mon. And also, like, the ability of Shen Pao being able to lower the defense even further, it's pretty nice. This team basically just plays itself. It's basically just going to be playing itself here. But, yeah, Dragonite's going to be very good. Flutter's going to be very good. I'm a big fan of, like, 
the safe multi-scale Tailwind Dragonites. It's just, it feels so nice in this meta. And there's the Meow Squad at Gudra. Is it, is it Paddle Blizzard? Is, is that a thing? You know what? I'm gonna respect this Mouscarada. Does it even get Petal Blizzard? Like, I'm gonna look at this. Where, where is this Mouscarada? And you guys can't see the screen. I'm just looking it up. It does learn Petal Blizzard. Like, you can see it right there. It gets Petal Blizzard. So, I'm gonna respect it because it could be Sap Sip or Gudra, guys. It could be Sap Sip or Gudra. So that means the right play is it might be like Scarfed. It might be Sash. I'm just gonna Dazzle because it's good damage, and I'm just going to E-speed. Just because, like, I don't even want to mess with that. Uh, we we don't play that. Homie, don't play that. We're going to Terrastalize, yo. What is the Terra here? Is it Steel? Steel would be a really good Terra here for that, by the way. Poison. Relatively the same thing. Relatively the same thing. They just want to be able to block the uh, the big move from, from the Flutter. So that goes off. Now let's see if they're Scarfed. They are Scarfed, and it is Petal Blizzard. I'm so good at Pokemon. <laughs> you ever seen anyone as good as Pokemon as me? Yeah, the reason why I say Steel's better is because it makes it so the E-Speed would be blocked a lot better on Steel than on Poison. But we finish off the Mouscarada. We're not really getting that much done with this Flutter at all. We crit the Mouscarada. Let's see. And we're Specs. Sorry, we're not Specs. We're Boosted. So like, we can switch it up if we want. Terra Blast. I don't know if that KOs us because we're really bulky on this Flutter. Oh, they go to the Dragonite. That won't KO. Dragonite thick. Yeah, yeah, that's a plus one, by the way, on their side. And we don't even care. Hey, good, good play. Good play. So I was able to scout that one out mouse hole time. Huh? Alright, and so this is where this is where we get real. They're definitely gonna go after that Dragonite again. Because they know that we have E-speed, right? So we're just gonna go for another. I'm gonna go for another Dazzle. And I'm just going to go for the Protect. I think Protect on Dragonite is so good. And it's nice to be able to, like, extend the usefulness of this Pokemon even further. Basically, I get an extra couple tons of Dragonite. There's no way they attack the Flutter. They're totally going after the Dragonite. Hopefully, they don't fate me, though. Fate. <gasps> Dude, this guy has all the tech, but we live at one because we're literally busted. We're literally big busted out here. Dude, this guy has all the tech. And then they're going to Terra Blast the Flutter, right? Or they could be Terrabossing Dragonite. Good play. Good play. This is a good play. Remember, because Faint breaks the Protect, and so you can double up into it. Good stuff. Dude, we, we, I, I've, I've read both of their turns. <laughs> and I still think I'm, like, low-key doing okay. Because, like, we can just Protect an EQ here, and we're in such a good spot. Like, we weren't really threatened by a lot of the stuff. We just had to break the Sash on the Mouse Hold. So now we're just going to go Protect, Flutter, go for the big Choice Scarf EQ, um, and just meaning it's spot. So big protect. Big oh we're steel. Hmm. Don't need to do it then. I was thinking about going steel to block the uh poison move, but they're not gonna go for a poison move into the great tusk. This is a cool game. This is a cool game. This is a cool team. I wonder if they are gonna go for the feint. I don't know if the Gudra will get KO'd by this earthquake, because it still will have the friend guard active. And so I wonder if they're going to go Protect Mouse and just try and, like, Muddy Water or something? We can also, like, this turn go Earthquake, Protect, in the next turn go for, like, a Shadow Bar, a Dazzling Gleam. Um, and, like, swap out the Tusk to be able to reset in the back. Because we don't know what they have in the back either. There's the Follow Me, so they're just going Super Standard. Uh, I think we might be able to at least break one of these. This is an Adamant Scarf Tusk. So we're pretty big. We're pretty big. We might just KO our Flutter, dude. I, I don't know what they're going to do. Oh my gosh, they both live so low. Terra Blast into the Flutter, yeah. That was a pretty obvious EQ. But they hadn't seen Protect yet, I don't think, right? Did they? Did they already see Protect? They had not seen Protect. All right, so that's fine. Uh, we're just going to go Dazzling them here, and we're going to reset our Scarf, send in the Shempow. They should be able to get us the win. What a cool team from them. That's so creative, you know? But another thing is, like, I was able to scout most of what they were doing and still definitely handled it. Like, that's the difference that a day two EUIC team brings to the table. You can see your opponent's super cool, crazy, good tech that puts them in winning positions. And you can still just handle it, like, super easy. Easy peasy, women squeezy. So, Shampao's going to switch in here. They can go for a feint into Shampao because they know they're going to go down and it would break our sash. But I want to be able to reset. They're not even going for the feint. Cool. 
and we get the double KO and we re and we got our Shen Pao on the board, which also reset our Tusk's ability to be locked into something else. So we're in an amazing spot here. They only have one Pokemon. Remember, the Masquerada was Scarfed and it went down on turn one. So we're in a really, really cool spot. And I wonder what the item was on Gudra. I wonder if that was like a clear amulet Gudra. Because like, if it was clear amulet, that'd make it so you keep your Sap Sipper boost. It ha it'd have to be it. Otherwise, it would just get Intimidate cycled, I think. And the Chi Yu from downtown. Chi Yu, I choose you. We haven't even Terra yet. Like, seriously, that's just how strong like this team is. You don't even need to Terra. You go for the Heat Wave, any burners. Yo, look at the Fluttermane living again. This Pokemon is so thick so thick and no burn and the sacred sword from downtown takes out chiyu and uh yeah we do be taking those wins all the way to the bank actually wait was it Sa oh, hold on hold on hold on hold the french toast that chiyu is scarfed which means the mascara wasn't scarfed oh yeah because our um our flutter got a spe uh, special attack boost on a speed boost i'm just i'm just i'm just bad <laughs> Oh, to the pay strong. Um, yeah, I forgot. Like, it's so weird. It's like, that's it. You help people with Patriot teams. You don't even know what stat they boost into. This uh, Flutter boosts in a special attack, um, which is still really good. Um, it's just that <laughs> I, I forgot. I, I thought we had a speed boost the whole time. So, yeah, actually, the Mouse Auto was probably, it was probably just sashed. And then this Chi was scarf. That's why I lost both those mons in the back. But either way, still, even I literally misplayed and, like, we won that game without even having to Terra. If that doesn't prove that this team is one that you guys should be using in your own games, I really don't know what else will. <laughs> okay, very, very cool idea. Like, Shampao Dragonite's good. I think Shampao Dragonite and Serilege are actually, like, really, really good together. What we're going to do here is actually bait them into Icy Winding. So we can do that by leading Tusk, because we know we probably are going to want Tusk in this game. And I think something like Tusk Dragonite could be very nice. And then we're going to switch. We're going to Protect Dragonite, Heart Switch, and King Gambit to soak that Icy Wind in the next turn, go, like, E-Speed Sucker Punch into their bundle and just get it off the board. And then for the last Mon, Flutter's okay. Um, I don't really like it versus some of those. I think we'd be much better off with Gyarados, because Gyarados is a, such a great Mon for Shen Pao. And I think Shen Pao's really good, but I think Gyarados with the Terra Flying to just one-shot the Amoongus is definitely going to be the thing that we need to succeed in this matchup specifically. So let's go into this. This Gyarados should have Terra Flying, right? Fuck, dude, I'm, I'm looking at all the wrong teams. This Gyarados is the wrong Gyarados for this team. But the Gyarados is the right Gyarados for this team. It's just not the right one that I thought we had. The Gyar This is the support Gyarados. Which is great. You know, maybe, man, holy moly. I'm, like, talking about fixing these teams. And I, I think I have the wrong ones a lot of the time. Either way, they still led the correct way. Gyarados is still fine. Um, It's just going to have to put a lot more... Dragonite's the one with Flying Terra. Which means the fact that we have Dragonite's good. So it's going to be Booster Bundle. Probably going to be Specs or Sash Flutter. And I would not be surprised to see Icy Wind Dazzling Gleam. And when they go Icy Wind Dazzling Gleam... We're just going to be fine. So we're going to switch in this guy. And we're going to get the Defiant proc. And that's going to be value. And if we see them go like Specs, Flutter, like Fairy Terra, that'd be really, really good. So we're trying to get a Defiant proc right here. And survey says no Terra. Okay. Icy Wendy's, please. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Yep. I feel like more people should go for this sort of play. Like, this is one of the things that, like, makes King Gambit, like, super cracked. Same thing, you can you can do this on Snarls, you can do this on Intimidates. That's a huge Defiant boost. It's, it's literally big. And, like, because we're vested, we don't really care about the, uh, about that. That looks to be Specs damage as well. So we can realistically just throw, we have Fire Terror here. We can realistically just throw a Sucker Punch into that slot. And we can swap in Gyarados here to be able to soak another Icy Wind uh, Dazzling Gleam and get a uh, Protect. And then next turn we just Sucker Punch the Bundle. Or even go like, per or King Gamma can do whatever it wants and we just Thunder Wave the Bundle and then we can repin with Dragon or Tusk. It's a good play. And this also covers if they wanted to swap out something, maybe swapping first, right? So they swap in first, whatever they swap in is going to get Intimidated. So it's really, really good. They are avoiding the Sucker Punch, yes, but uh, this is fine. We can just Taunt that Gyarados. I wonder if they're going to be going Hydro. I would not be surprised to see freeze dry into this Gyarados slot. I really wouldn't. Like, I really, really wouldn't. It's fine with me. Like, I Gyarados is, Gyarados is just Gyarados, you know? We would probably then send out maybe Tusk. Suck Punch fails, of course. Never lucky. And freeze dry. Yeah, it's completely fine. Yep, that's what, that's what it has to be. We just get a, get a repin of Dragonite here. So Dragonite's going to be able to come back out. 
And it's going to be heavy on Tusk winning this game, I feel. I feel like that's going to be definitely how this has to go down. Dragonite the Spacey. I know all their shinies are legit, too. They talked to me about that. Let's see. The right play here. I'm just low kick that. And we're going to have to KO this guy with Terra Blast, the uh, Amoongus. So let's see what they want to do. We still have our multi-scale active. It cost us our Gyarados there, but it's not like Gyarados was doing a ton for us in that matchup. We know they have a Flutter main, right? We have the Bundle Amoongus. And I think we're, like, low-key fine. We have a plus two King Gambit. And as long as we can kill this Amoongus in one hit, we're in a good spot. Ooh, Terra. It's going to be Water Terra. Are they going to go Water Terra with Rage Powder? It'd be a very, very good play from them. This person's playing this game perfectly right now. They definitely should still be Rage Powdering, by the way, because Rage Powder would let you avoid Sucker Punch. Freeze Dry, okay. No Rage Powder, wow. Wow, wow, wow. That sucks for me. Maybe crits? We're going to get big Spored here. Let's see, who are they going to Spore? We have a Lum on our Dragonite, which is great. Okay, big damage with that. Mm. Almost, almost took that guy out. Who are you Sporing? King Gambit? Okay, that works. So we do get to E-Speed before the Amoongus can like do anything. So we're just going to stay in. doesn't matter what moves we use. We cannot wake up. I don't even think there's an issue with just protecting here and trying to fish for sleep turns to wake up. Because like, what are they going to do? They're going to swap out the Amoongus or something? I don't really care. Because Dragonite's still really good. We can still just E-Speed the uh, bundle. And I don't want to take that damage. I also don't want to go like them protect bundle and, and basically waste my lumberry i'd like to keep that lumberry for the late game if possible this is a completely fine play i don't think there's an issue with this i think realistically there's a good shot that they just protect with their bundle anyways because they just wanted the repin yeah so we both protected it's, it's a bit of a wash turn but now king gambit has wasted one of its leaf turns so it's a, it's a safe play dude what if i tailwinded there that would have been so cracked Holy moly. All right, if I wake up here, we probably can just win. Because this will KO that Flutter. It's totally Specs Flutter, right? And let's try and take out the bundle. Let's see if they go Fairy Terra. No, they're in Terra. They already want Water Terra. Yeah, let's see what happens. This Dragonite's still really bulky. I should probably just be Tail winning here, if I'm being completely honest. I should just be Tail winning here. But I'm going to try and... Uh, they, they probably were scouting for extreme speed. And then they they saw that I didn't go extreme speed. They're like, oh, he probably doesn't have it. So they might just stay in. Okay, they double swap back out for Amoongus. That works for me. They're just letting me like wake up. Like An assurance into that guy just absolutely ends their life. And we get the KO there. Yeah, that works for me. Like I'm just trying to wake up, boys. Like I'm just trying to waste these sleep turns. Yeah, next turn. Yeah, we got to wake up. So next turn, what we do into the... Uh, we can probably just go double dip into the... Hmm, I think we should probably go into the Flutter. Because it would force the redirection, and worst case scenario, we just get Spore. Oh, Sarah weird. Huh. Protect Sarah Spore works. If that's what's going to happen, I actually don't hate this play. You just nuke the Amoongus. Rage Potter. Okay, so they're probably going to be bitter blading me then. Unless they're going for... Ugh, this is a hard situation. We're going to get good damage into this Amoongus. And it's going to put it within range for an Earthquake from my Tusk. But I'd like to just... Yeah, they, they remember they outsped because we did soak that Icy Wind. I don't think I could have done anything different there. It, they stopped the Sucker Punch potential. But I think this actually is going to put us in a situation where we still win. Because now they just don't have the damage to mitigate. So we come out here. I wonder if I should even click Terra Blast here. I think I should still click Terra Blast. Because we're going to go Earthquake. And I'm thinking if what I should do with Dragonite here. I don't know if we KO the Serilege with Earthquake. Serilege has a higher base spadef. I'm going to target the Amoongus slot with this Earthquake. It would get redirected, right, if we don't KO the Amoongus. But if we don't KO the Amoongus and get Spore, we lose the game. Cool. So this was the right play. Cool. This was the right play. We crit one of them. We crit, I think, the Amoongus, yeah. So we doubled in that slot anyways, just in case. Because they tried to Spore, they didn't Rage Powder. 
It's a good play so far. And if we outspeed, that's basically just game. We won. Cool. Yeah, that, was a, that person played that game really, really well. Had a great team. And uh, you can still tell we were in... I, I'm not going to say we were in complete control saving the Tusk in the back. But, like, bro, we were in complete control saving the Tusk in the back. We saw that they needed to lead Icy Wind. This team conditions people into leading Icy Winds. And it punishes them for trying to get that speed control. We should outspeed here. I think. Either way, this is probably just game. Yeah. See that? The power of Scarf Tusk, man. The power of Scarf Tusk. Look at that damage. You can Dazzling Woman. It shouldn't kill the Dragonite, though. Yeah. You can kill the Tusk, but then we just come in hot with the Terra Boss. I think if they crit that Terra... They, or that, sorry, that uh, Dazzling Woman would have been in a bad spot, but we just take these wins all the way to the bank. So, yeah. Uh, pretty good stuff. Again, this team kind of just works. This team kind of just works, even at a high level. And all you got to do is... Get those Defiant procs and just come in and win the game. So we'll take those wins all the way to the bank. Okay, Palafin. Hmm. I like Gyarados versus this core, like, a lot. I like Gyarados versus this core, like, a lot, a lot. But I wonder what we need to bring as teammates. I also have to really respect the Bonnet. I think Dragonite's a great lead here. I think Dragonite's just, like, a super, super solid lead. And I would go Tusk again, because Tusk, Tusk is still just, like, pretty cracked for being able to revenge KO specific things. It also is the biggest baiter of that Icy Wind if they were to lead Bundle. We could theoretically, though, just lead like this. Only issue with that is I don't really want to get up the Toxic Spikes on the Glamora, but like I also don't really care. I know that sounds kind of weird. But like those... And then I wonder what I should be bringing in the back. I know that Gyarados is very, very good here. Let's just try Gyarados then. I think Gyarados is way better here than people give it credit for. Yes, they have bundle, but if you take out the bundle and can like neuter the Glamora, um, we're in a really good spot. And we have Fairy Terra on our Gyarados, which I think is so good. Uh, it's just, it's so good. It's very, very underrated. People are just like, bro, what, what even is that? Why is that the thing? And it makes Gyarados, like, so good at, like, hard-checking Chi Yu's. Because Chi Yu wants to go for Dark Pulses into Gyarados because they can't Heat Wave. And then this says, you don't know where I'm going to go, and you can only lock in one. So it's, like, really, really cool Terra choice. Bundle and Roaring Moon. Okay. Where's the booster? That's a good booster slot. We could double into that slot and go E-Speed Sucker Punch, and it would probably go down. I wonder if they're going to Scale Shot me. I think that KOs. Are we Dark Terra here? We're flying. Ooh, that's Gold Terra too. Yeah, let's try it. I wonder if that KOs. Okay. Let's go. Oh, yes. Nice booster. Cool. And you can probably get a Tailwind off. Breaking Swipe. That's great tech. That's great. That breaks our multi-scale. That's really good stuff from them. I like that a lot. Let's see what they want to bring out now. Dude, what if I would have swapped in that King Gambit, just like I talked about? Like, what if I swapped in King Gambit? You know what I mean? Like, and they went Icy when Breaking Swipe? Like, bro, that would have been so good. They would have got, like, a plus four on the Defiant proc. Do you see how, like, easy it is to get those off? That's nuts. But they're big thinking. That bundle was basically the thing that stopped Gyarados, right? I still actually think if we double into this bonnet, we'll get the KO, even at the minus one. So I'm going to do it. Um, I don't want to get put to sleep. We could... I'll do it. I, I ain't doing anything else today. Let's think about what the right play is, though. Should I be Sacred Sorting or Ice Spinnering? Because, like, they're probably going to Terrastalize it. Fire's the common Terra on that thing. This is fine. If you want to Terra, be my guest. I could have also dropped the Double Protect. They are Terrastalizing. I think, though, that they're going to want to Spore... Oh, they're Terrastalizing there. This is fine. Let's see if they protect. There's a fire tower over there. All right, so we, remember, we have Gyarados. We're in a really, really good spot here. We are at minus one on both of our monsters. Defense shred going in. Hopefully, they're not protecting. They are faster than our Dragonite. But I think we're in a fine spot. We don't even need Tailwind in this situation yet. I don't think they can, like, Oka my Dragonite, especially because I'm losing that defensive typing. That Dragon defensive typing. So let's see what they do. Let's see what they do. Hopefully, we get this. No protects. It's cheating. There we go. 
good damage. No citrus either. No citrus. No citrus. Yes. All right, so dragon is going to be minus two. They crit us. That would have KO'd us if we were still dragon type, by the way. We're at minus two, but there is a defense shred from the Shen Pao. Terra Blast super effective into the Amoongus slot, survey says. Yes. It's not even Amoongus, it's a Brute Bonnet. But we take those. That Brute Bonnet was the problem here. And so now, realistically, they've traded two Mons and a Terra for two attack drops and a Terra. We can just swap out of here, I think. I low-key think the right play here is to just swap out. Like, what do we want to bring in? This is definitely a bring-in of Gyarados, I think. I think the right play here for me is to just go E-Speed into something. I'm going to E-Speed the Garchomp because that would be the more, more common Sash user here. But they've also been playing that Roaring Moon like it's Sash, which is weird. And we're just going to swap in the Gyarados again and Intimidate. Yes, there's Rocky uh, Rough Skin involved, but like I'd like to just break potential Sash and like seal up the Garchomp slot the best that I can. And you know that they're probably going to quick break me swipe again, so it's fine. Gyarados the Serene, the fairy type potential Terra that we can't use. Clear Amulet on the Roaring Moose. Cool. That means that it's not sashed. Protect Garchomp. That, that could still totally be sashed. Like, I just I just feel it. Every once in a while you get the, the sash chomp vibes. This is one of those times. But the good thing about this is it's protection going to be on cooldown for next turn. So you can totally break and swipe the Gyarados here. We have leftovers. We can mitigate a lot of that. Um, we're probably going to throw a Thunder Wave into the Roaring Moon. We don't even technically have to here. We have two Mons that are very, very good versus what they have. And I'm just going to come up with the Shen Pao here. So let's see. We could even just technically Waterfall the Gyarados. If, sorry, uh, the Garchomp if we wanted to, to put it within range for the D-Gleam. But yeah, I think the right play here, we just come in here. Go for the Thunder Wave into the Roaring Moon. Ice Spin on the Garchomp and force them to go for a Double Protect. And I think we're probably going to be okay. Alright, Ice Spinner Ds. Love the Thunder Wave here. Love this for us. Ice Spinner, no double protect. Are you sashed? No, no sash. I had the sash vibes. I, ha I had the, the vibes. I think they should, at that point you should have definitely gone for the double protect. I don't see why you wouldn't. It was the right play. What else was I doing with a Shen Pao? You know, Terra Blast Fire, bro. Woke up, chose that violence out here. Terra Blast Fire. Goodbye, Shen Pao. I love Red Gyarados. It's probably one of my top three favorite shinies. Hopefully we hit this. Let's go. And you may say, why, why are you Thunder Waving instead of using just Waterfall? And the reason is, we have, like, no attack investment. And so now we're actually faster than them, and we can go for flinches. So we're, it's just the, it's the right play. And so we're able to come in with the Flutter. We can just go Shadow Ball, Waterfall, probably get a double kill like that. Cool. We've got the Specs. No, sorry, not specs. The booster flutter that goes into special attack. Dude, this team is just so freaking cool. It basically just plays itself. It's really, like, we could have won, like, three or four other ways, too. We could have, like, won for that King Gambit play, too, and got all the Defiant procs again. Battles cancel. We're going to take those wins. And it's just that easy. More Dash Bun Chi Yu. So, dude, we could totally use that Fairy Terra Gyarados, man. We could totally do it. Let's see. They have a little bit of Dragonite Shimpao as well. Huh, and a Zumaru. What would be the best way to break that Chi Yu? We have Fire Terra on our King Gambit if we did need it, and that's a very good Terra here, so it makes it so we resist the Lava Plume and, like, we can't get burned by it. So that's a pretty good play if I wanted to. I think that Tusk is actually still really good here. And... Maybe not. Hmm. It's so it's so hard because like I know that they're gonna do it, but I also have to like low key respect like Shimpao Dragonite too. I'm gonna lead Gyarados. I think Gyarados is just a solid lead, and then I think something like Gyarados Flutter is actually really good because we can just go protect Thunder Wave and then like get all the repins that we need. Then we come in with our Tusk in the back, and I'm gonna use Shenpao in the very very back, and I'm gonna use this probably with like a Flying Terra in the late game next to my Great Tusk. That's the idea here. I actually think a Flying Terra Shampoo is pretty nice. You don't really see it like all that often, but it makes the perfect partner for something like a Scarf Great Tusk. And so we have like uh, Flying Terra Shampoo. We have the 
flying type Gyarados here. We have the perfect partners. I don't think we need the speed control from our Dragonite. I'm not, I, I'm sure you guys can probably tell, I'm not the biggest fan of Dragonite mirrors, especially because the Dragonite that we're using here doesn't have like Ice Spinner or Dragon Claw. And so they could totally bring their Dragonite. We'll just bring the things to beat that. So Shien, Pao, Azumarill. This is one of the reasons why we let Gyarados. If you actually took a back look at their team, Gyarados checked so many of their Mons. Um, like so many of them. Like throwing that double and there, that Shien Pao is now a wet noodle. It doesn't do anything. It does literally nothing. And another really cool thing about this lead is the fact that we Protosynthesis boost in a special attack and not speed. They think they're in such a good spot here. There's nothing stopping them from like, but then I just hit it. Um, I don't know if that's going to be Belly Drum Azumarill. So, I'm not going to lie. Like, I want to go Thunder Wave into the Shen Pao. But I should probably taunt that Azumarill. It's a game loss if I don't taunt the Azumarill. Because I don't know anything about its set, guys. Woke up, chose. Hey, you Azumarill, let's go. <laughs> taunt? Who needs taunt when you can just win, bro? Yeah, like they, just, they don't have it. The, the Intimidate's too big. And then this makes us outspeed them next turn. Uh, the Thunder Wave. So the next turn, we can just go like Dazzling Gleam plus, uh, plus Waterfall and get the KO. Throat Chop. Yeah, not going to be enough. We're losing that neutral neutrality here. Moonblast is going to put you, it should put you low enough to where you aren't going to have enough health to Belly Drum if you get it. Yeah, so even if you Citrus here, uh, you wouldn't have enough health. And they didn't even Citrus, so then I mean, they're probably not clicking Belly Drum. But now they're both within range for Dazzling Gleam Waterfall. So let's see if it's like a Liquidate. Player Rough. Dude, Gyarados don't care. That's Banded. Cool. You can see that's Banded. And the reason, it's, we, the reason we know it's Banded is because they got Intimidated, right? And so that's a that's technically like a neutral Azumarill, and that's how much damage I would normally do against this Gyarados set. So we can just go Waterfall into Shen Pao and just D-Gleam, and we're good to go. You can go for a Sucker Punch if you want. Yeah, Aqua Jet. Oh, it's not Banded. Wait, what the hell item is on that thing then? Was it was it Aquarium Amulet and I wasn't paying attention? It's probably like Aquarium Amulet no, and I wasn't paying attention. Um... Because that's a, that's a lot. That's a lot of damage that it shouldn't be able to be doing. Hopefully this Gyarados is faster than Shen Pao. Ooh, it's not! Uh, that's, a, that's a mistake for me. Oh, are they adamant? Hmm. They should... The only way we outspeed there is if they're adamant. Works for me. Works for me! Adamant Shen Pao, dude. Woke up, chose the violence out here. I wonder what the adamant on the Azumarill was. Because, like, I could have swore that it... I, so I get intimidated. And that's like a lot of damage. Maybe it's like a... Maybe it was... Mystic Water? I don't I don't know. They got the Chiyu Dash Bun, though. They got it in the back. All right, cool. Hey, this is your shot. This is your one shot, one opportunity, Mom Spaghetti. Let's see. So we're just going to go Protect, Thunder Wave, then next turn we're going to be able to Moonblast out. And we're going to see what they Terra. You're going to go Ground Terra, bro? <laughs> Ground Terra, block the, uh, block the Thunder Wave. Alright. So Protect here, because they do outspeed. You see how good this Gyarados is, man. It's so good. Lob Plume? Easy peasy. Gyarados should be able to eat this pretty well. 76 plus nature investment and then like i don't yeah the body press won't do it either yawn go for it that's fine with me fine with me just gotta hit this let's go and now we outspeed with the rest of our mod so we can just go for a moon blast into that slot with our flutter and probably get it i wonder if gyarados cares like actually i think the right play is to just double into the shoe just to make sure that we take it out because we can't let them get any more boosts, you know? You can only... Actually, we can just Shadow Ball that guy. It's dead. Yeah, so we'll swap in here. And just Shadow Ball that thing. Shadow Ball's more damage, right? Super effective, Multiplier. Should actually still KO. She has a lot of bulk, but like this should still KO. Like, they went Ghost Terra. They chose this. 
yeah, they're definitely protecting the dash button. That's what everyone's like, why did you just moonblast the dash button? That, ta- that solves everything. Well, it loses to this. Like, if you if you moonblasted there and they lava plume, like, double burn, destroyed me, I would be really sad. Yeah, cool. And now we can moonblast the dash button. Because what was dash going to do? Absolutely nothing. Say it again. And we'll take those wins. I really wonder what that Azumarill item was. It makes no sense how it was that strong. All right. You guys, did you guys know that Headlong Rush is technically boosted by Iron Fist, but nothing gets Iron Fist and Headlong Rush? It's a weird choice of game mechanics. Maybe eventually in the future something will. Something will be like hidden ability Iron Fist that gets Headlong Rush. Dude, just give give it to give it to Great Tusk. <laughs> Hariyama almost gets it, you know. We'll take those. And this should get the KO. Boom. Neutral damage. And we take that one out. I played four games and won all four of them in a row. Easy peasy. You guys can do the exact same thing we did in this game. Thank you so much for submitting this team. I really, I really appreciate it. This team was so much fun to use. And, you know, thank you for coming to me. I'm sure you're watching. That's why I'm talking. Like, I'm the person that submitted the team. Uh, thank you so much for coming to me and asking for my help in, you know, giving the slight little feedback that I gave on this team. Like I said, I didn't really change that much. I just, I definitely did my best to help put them in the right headspace to do well with the event. I gave them a couple tips on how to maybe uh, optimize the Gyarados and the Shen a little bit, but this was 100% their team. So thank you so much for submitting. It was a lot of fun and hopefully people like it. Um, I will say before we end this video, let me know what you think about the group coaching, the thing we talked about at the very start of the video. We're gonna be doing this probably a couple times a month on Patreon and I think it's going to be a lot of fun. Um, we're going to do it on May 3rd, which is the day before I fly out to Portland again. I don't know if I'm going to be playing in Portland, but I am currently signed up for the tournament. So let me know. Uh, I think that realistically, Pokemon is such a complicated game. And there are so many things that you just can't really know about how the EVs, the math, and how like leads and stuff like that work unless someone actually just sits you down and tells you. So if we can get 20, 30 people in like a Discord chat, a Discord call, and I can just go build teams, break everything down, and explain to people how things work, I think that's going to help everybody. I also think there's so many really cool teams that get submitted on the Patreon team submission post that are so intricate that I don't really want to mess with them that much. So I, I kind of just fix what they have. But sometimes if that person's in the call, I can just be like, hey, do you mind if we change this? Or what do you think of this? Or what do you think of this? And if I can get like a yes or no answer in those situations, we can actually speed things up a lot more and help even more people and everyone learn together. There's so many different things. Like it's gonna be like teaching a class. So if that's something that at all interests you, even the lowest tier of Patreon, the two hour tier, will get access to these live coaching sessions where we're all gonna get together. I'm gonna be building teams, fixing teams, answering questions, and people can definitely ask as many questions as they want. So thank you guys so much for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. And uh, other than that, peace out. I'll see you guys next time.